Combat Drone fans to another exciting episode of Jam Down Drones. Today, we're going to be looking at 10 tips to remember when flying your drone over water. If you just watched the DJI Mini SE and you're not sure as to what to look out for when doing this, this video should help you. And for all those persons who are just curious about the world of drones, there's something there for you too. Stick around drone fans, there's plenty left to learn. Tip number one, never fly too low. It is true that while the sensors of the DJI Mini SC are able to create a three-dimensional view of the world around it, there are still limitations as to what it can do. Unlike other drones that have sensors all around its body, the DJI Mini SC only has downward facing visual sensors and a proximity sensor to sense distance. It's always important to watch the distances which you fly, especially when you're flying over water. Ensure that you're at least 2.5 meters or at least 6 feet above the surface of the water. This should give you enough clearance for waves on a relatively windy day. Never fly too high. Tip number 2. Although the wind resistance of the DJI Mini SC is impressive, that doesn't mean we should push it to the highest point in the air. The higher up you go, especially when you're flying over water, means the stronger the winds and the less control you'll have over that Whether drone. you're flying your drone over the beach or over the river, flying it in a windy condition is not normally recommended. And the reason for this is because the wind can take the drone away if it is strong enough to overpower the propellers. Remember, every single drone out there has what is known as wind resistance, and each drone has a different level of wind resistance. The wind resistance for the DJI Mini SC is seen on the screen. So, the next time you go out flying, check to see if it's too windy, and if it is, maybe it's just not the best time to fly, and another day would probably be better. Tip number 4. Check the wind direction. The DJI Mini SE has a built-in attitude meter which allows us to know how level the drone is. See here by the horizon, which is that line running across the middle of the circle here, and the circle at the top represents the controller and the orientation which we point the antennas. Below is this triangle that is found in the middle of the circle and that represents our drone. Now depending on which direction the triangle is pointing, it will more than likely show the direction that the front of the drone is pointing, with the point at the top there being the head. Now let's zoom up a little bit more for the controller icon. For the antenna, you'll notice that there is a little triangle at the top of the circle. That triangle is what allows us to understand the orientation of the antennas as we move the controller around. So if I move it to the left, that triangle should move to the left. Or if I move the controller to the right, it's going to move to the right. Now, understanding where the wind is coming from is simple. Reading the attitude meter, the drone should bank either right or left depending on where the wind is coming from. Wherever that wind is coming from, the drone will bank to that side in order to compensate for the push or pull force. And also, the drone can do what is known as pitching forward or pitching backwards to compensate for the wind as it blows against it. Now understand drone fans, the attitude meter will change constantly as the drone is flying through the air and constantly adjusting. The built-in gyroscope inside this drone allows it to read with very accurate reading just how much the drone is pitching or banking. Remember drone fans, when you're flying out there, always go against the direction of the wind so that when you're coming back, you can get that boost to come back and use less power. Tip number five, check battery level. This is a very, very important tip, guys, because as you're flying over the water, it sometimes gets a bit hard to remember the percentage at which we're flying. But we want to keep our eyes on the battery stats to make sure that we are not flying beyond the drone's capabilities. We get three readings by tapping on the battery icon seen here in the DJI Fly App, which shows the time until it returns to home, which is RTH. And according to this, it's 16 minutes and 30 seconds the time until forced landing and the time until battery depleted. Pay close attention to these warnings drones fans because not paying attention to this can mean the difference between you having a drone and you losing one. Tip number six, look out for birds. Seeing birds wherever we go is a quite common thing. There are very large numbers of birds near water sources like beach, beaches and rivers and streams. So if we're going to be taking shots there, it's only natural that we want to pay attention to our surroundings. 
Birds don't tend to react too well to some drones, especially given the sound that they make as they move around the environment. For some birds, they want to attack your drone, and if they attack, you simply need to push up on the left joystick as it's difficult for birds to climb their altitude like the way drones can. Never take off on sand. Never take off on sand because sand particles are very small and they can get wedged into the parts of this drone. Since there are quite a bit of moving parts on the gimbal, it would only take a small amount of sand to ruin this gimbal completely. So you want to make sure that as much as possible as you're launching, the moving parts of the gimbal is not well covered with sand or in a position where the propellers spin and kick up sand into these moving parts. Remember too, drone fans, that even the motors of the DJI Mini SC, which are brushless motors, are open and exposed, so it's not very difficult for sun particles to become lodged in these moving parts. For this purpose, you may need a launch pad, or you can do a hand launch. A hand launch will require a bit more practice, but it's definitely better than putting it on the sun and launching it that way. Tip number 7. Look out for cell towers. Cell towers are one of the strongest interferences that can be found in the environment as we fly our drone through the air. This can cause signal breakouts or dropouts and can cause us to lose our drone, so it's good to pay attention to our surroundings as it relates to these structures. Things such as hills and buildings also cause interference, which is known as structural interference. Make sure that you are within the clear view of the drone as you're flying it and there is no obstacle between the drone and that controller. Tip number 8. Know the fly zones that you're in. It's very important that you are aware of the airspace that you're flying in at the time when you're flying. This is for more than one reason. And so the map of the DJI Mini SE fly up, it shows the airports that are available and it also shows areas that we can and cannot fly. These areas are categorized as zones. Restricted zone, altitude zone, authorization zone, warning zones are just an example of a couple of the zones. If it is that you are in a zone where there is an airport nearby, then more than likely you will not be allowed to take off, and that's quite normal. Consider it a safety feature. Number 9. Flying in visual line of sight. It is very important that we fly in visual line of sight because for most countries it is legal to do so. You want to make sure that you have eyes on the drone at all times as you're flying because the eyes of the camera can sometimes be deceiving. So you want to have both your eyes or the eyes of another observer giving you more information as you fly. This will ensure that we don't run into other aircraft in the air that might be using the same airspace as we are. This is how we fly responsibly and we prevent any potential accidents from happening. Choose home point very carefully. Tip number 10. When we're flying long distances, especially over water, we want to make sure that the home point that we update on this app is away from the water itself. That is, we choose an home point that is on land and not in water. We can do this by going to the three dots to the upper right, and there we see update home point where we can click on it, and it should give us the option of updating the home point as to the current location of the drone. Okay drone fans, we're now at the ending of the video. But is there anything that was not included on this list of 10 tips to remember when flying your drone over water? Comment down below. Until then, it's Jamdong Drones, over and out.